Well, good morning, everybody, our listeners and our uh, live um, attendees. I want to thank you very much for coming on uh, this morning or this afternoon, depending where you are. Um, it is my great pleasure to welcome Brigitte Dove, who's going to share some of her amazing learnings and journey. And as you know, this um, channel that we're working on is all about taking charge of your health naturally. So if anybody feels that they are not actually reaching their full potential and there's more that they want from their life, you need to stay tuned because Brigitte has wonderful techniques that she's learned over the years and is a master teacher at what she does. So from me, a huge welcome, Brigitte, and thank you for being our guest this morning, today. Well, I'm delighted to be here, Margie, and thank you so much for inviting me. So perhaps I think a good place to start, Brigitte, would be what took you on this journey? Because I just love your story. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, I was born in London in the UK, and I had a very challenging childhood, um, a very abusive mother and a father who didn't stand up for himself, let alone stand up for me. So I was full of pain and fear and anger. I was actually terrified of my mother. And when I was 12, I started smoking cigarettes. By the time I think I was 14, I was smoking about 30 a day because I, I had to numb out the pain. And I also had made the decision that I was going to live in my head because I just couldn't handle being hurt anymore. And that was how I was going to get through that part of my life. But I also knew somehow deep down that when I could get away from my family of origin, I was going to find a way to heal myself because I never believed that life was supposed to be painful and fearful and difficult and a struggle. I just, the, the little child in me just never really believed that. When I looked at the trees and the birds and the flowers in our backyard, I used to think, but surely there's a way to be happy. You know, that, that was just my my childlike way of looking at it. And I did succeed. <laughs> when I was, uh, after I finished college, I got married and my son was born. And it was when I was looking into my son's beautiful blue eyes, that I realized if I did not heal myself, I was going to transmit all this fear and anger and pain to him. And then we'd have another person very unhappy on the planet. And so I made the decision, and it was very clearly a decision that I made that I was going to heal myself. So I had to start looking around how I was going to do that. And I'd certainly heard about meditation, but at that time, I thought meditation was simply sitting in silence which I, I just couldn't do because I was full of emotional turmoil and physical tensions and too much overloaded mind. So I never thought that meditation could help me until I came across the teachings of Osho in a London meditation center, an Osho meditation center in London, and I started to do some of the expressive meditation techniques, like the dynamic meditation, the uh, shaking meditation, the laughter meditation. And suddenly I found my answer to all my problems was because the expressive techniques in the first stage, they help you express out of the body mind your anger, um, your sadness, and also help you unleash your laughter because my laughter had shut down because when you decide to shut down, you shut everything down. The laughter, the tears, the good and the bad. 
So um, I then decided that I wanted to go to India because when I was six months pregnant, I found out my husband was having an affair. So everything sort of piled up and I knew I had to get away from him. So I decided to take my son to India. So when he was 14 months old, that's what we did. And then wow. I really started, I really started doing these meditations kind of quote seriously, you know, and I was invited to do, to train, to teach them, which was an incredible blessing and gift. And by the time I had finished my, I, d I went on several visits actually, but by the time I had finished there, I'd found inner peace. I found myself, my creativity, my voice, and it was it was just amazing the the effect those meditation techniques had upon me. So moving forward from those days, which I think that's such a beautiful story, it gives hope and inspiration to so many women out there who haven't yet found that inner peace and yes. found that there is another way. This is why yes. this is so important. It's not a case of taking uh, anxiety medication and taking oh, no. sleeping pills, which is no. what so <laughs> many people want that quick fix, but this right. is another way. So would you like to perhaps share some of the techniques that you're using currently with such amazing effect? Well, I'm going to uh, use the laughter meditation because it is extremely powerful and the benefits from it are just incredible and they're very quick. That's really the, the beauty of these expressive techniques is that they work very quickly. So what we do in the first stage is you just simply start laughing. So you can, if you were, you could raise your arms in the air and shout, Yahoo, 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 <laughs> Yahoo, <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then you laugh, just laughing, no talking. Um, and then what I do with my students is then I sound a chime. And then you take the energy of the laughter within and you sit in silence. So it has two stages. The first stage, we just laugh. The second stage, we sit in silence. And then I do three chimes and that's the end of the meditation. And it's very simple. It's very powerful and has deep benefits for everybody and, and the benefits come very quickly. I teach a very wide range of different meditation techniques and I have found that the laughter meditation is the best one for unleashing our creativity. It also very quickly releases physical tensions from the body. I think perhaps most people already know that you feel better after laughing. And so the body benefits um, the mind benefits because you can't be worried and laughing at the same time. So the energy of the laughter erases worry, it erases anxiety and helps you be more in the moment, more present and more full of joy because the laughter is also unleashing our innate joy that everybody has in them. So we always feel better. And then in terms of the heart and the emotions, so laughter opens the heart even more because you can't hate people that you laugh with, you know? So all your relationships benefit because people like people who are, can laugh, who are fun, who are playful, uh, which, because those are all dimensions of laughter. And laughter is also a dimension of love. So it really helps bridge the gap in many situations with, with relationships or if there's awkward situations, it's, 
it's very beneficial. And then from the spiritual perspective, laughter acts as a bridge to take us deeper down inside. It, it's like when you go, ha, 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 this is a strong energy that starts digging down through all the blocks. So it'll help you get down to your center, two inches below the navel. And it, it helps us become centered and calm very quickly because you have the contrast. In the first stage is very extrovert and laughing. The second stage, you close your eyes and you sit in silence. And so it helps you reach to your center and be calm. And that's where inner peace is also residing uh, very quickly. So the benefits are many and it's free. <laughs> that's another benefit. <laughs> you don't really have to, you know, um, you don't have to go to India like I did, though, because I learned a lot more than the laughter meditation. So, yes, it's one of my most popular techniques, that's for sure. So when you are doing meditation, like I, I just love the laughter meditation, would you do, say, the this one and then the ha, ha, ha? Or one after the other, or do you do all the laughter, um, which is expressive, and then the ding, and then into silence? Yeah. The first you stage. You do the one is, after the other. You first stage, just get yourself going, because to start laughing, I mean, I can just start laughing, because I've been doing it for over 20 years, right? <laughs> you know, I can just start, but especially for beginners or something, it really helps a lot to do the Yahoo, do it three times to get you started. Okay, right. That makes you start laughing for no reason. And then you just continue laughing until mm, whoever's okay. leading your group does the chime and then you, then you sit in silence. So what about people who actually are not in a group? How would you advise them to, to start with a technique like yours, which is so effective, do they have to do it in a group? No, no, you can do it on your own. Absolutely. Um, the thing with, is always to get started because laughter is the kind of thing, the more you do it, the easier it is. It comes more easily each time. That's why I can just start laughing now because I've been doing it so long. I've done hundreds of hours of laughter. So find what helps you get started. You might need to find something on YouTube, your favorite comedian or baby laughter is always very, very good because very pure, you know, to help you start laughing. You might need to laugh along with the baby or something like that to get you going. But you can certainly do it on your own. Yes. Well, that's a great tip. So, um, for anyone who wants to get started on this journey of healing and coming into their true self and inner peace, um, do you have a little tool or maybe two tools or three tools that you'd like to share with them today? Yes. Um, the first thing is always to start with the body. Meditation is based on relaxation. And with relaxation, always start with the body. So your first step, and you can do this anywhere, anytime, keep checking in with your body. Could your shoulders come down a little bit more? Could your jaw be more relaxed? Could your arms be more relaxed? Always asking yourself, could I be more relaxed right now? The body, though. Do not start with the mind, because that is an uphill battle. The mind and the emotions will calm down behind the body. The more relaxed the body is, the more relaxed the mind will be, the, and the emotions will calm down too. So I always encourage people to really pay attention to their body, which of course is the number one reason to do meditation, because without our health, where are we going? You know, nowhere. <laughs> so um, 
And, and simple things like make sure you stay hydrated and drink a lot of water, step outside and for five minutes and look at the sky and listen to the birds, uh, just to be in the fresh air, especially if you have a job where you're behind a computer a lot. Um, notice if the body feels tired or if the body feels like it needs to go for a walk. All kinds of little things like that are helping your meditation. Because what is meditation? Meditation is simply being in the present moment. And the body is always in the present moment. So if I said to, your, to you, raise your right hand yesterday, you can't do it, right? <laughs> if I said, raise your right hand tomorrow, you can't do it because the body doesn't understand the past and the future. But if I say, raise your hand now, the body will raise, yeah. So this is, this is a very helpful thing to know that the body is always in the present moment. And so anytime you're connecting to your body, it's helping you come into the, uh, into the present moment, which is meditation. And then of course, there's the breathing, which is also always in the present moment. So a little tip is just to take three deep breaths. Whenever you remember, wherever you are, just stop. The body loves it when you do that. Very good for your health. And it brings you into present where you want to be as often as possible and not let the mind take you off here and there and create all kinds of nonsense in your head. So those are always my best, most fundamental tips for getting into meditation. The awareness I of the body. love that. That is just so helpful and we can all do it. So if there's anyone out there, just do it. And if I'm not mistaken, Prigita, when we first spoke, I think you have a little gift for all our listeners and uh, people participating with us and who are listening to the recording. Would you like to share yes. with them what that is? Absolutely. So it's on my website, which <laughs> is www.discovermeditation.com. And then you go forward slash contact. <clears throat> and when you, when you bring that page up, there's a three-part video series, which is free. <coughs> and it's to, to help activate abundance in your life. The, the video is about five minutes each. And um, because all this work I do with the foundation of the meditations and starting with the body, it's all about bringing abundance to you physically for your health, financially and with your love and relationships so that's what the that's what that free gift is for everybody well that is so generous and thank you so much because i know there's so many people out there especially in these uncertain times that we're all experiencing and actually living through right now so i think more than ever this technique which is so simple People say, oh, yes, I meditate, but do they really? But right. how simple are these beautiful tips you've given us? And um, I look forward to doing that, that myself because I haven't got back into my meditation. I pick it up and then put it down and I'm not consistent. So in passing, would you say this is something everybody should do every day? Yes, and the consistency is what's important. If you want results, it's like everything. Then remember to do it every day. And you need only spend maybe between one and five minutes. It's not going to take up a huge amount of, it, of your time. And then the other thing to remember is that meditation is being in the present moment. So whatever you are doing, driving your car, taking out the trash or at the computer, the more you can remember to be in the present moment, that is meditation. So you're already doing it a lot of the time. You know, most people are already present at least some of the time in their lives. 
Yes. Gita, thank you. I really honor your experience and thank you for mm -hmm. sharing your, your beautiful teachings that you had from Osho and you are now just sharing the gift uh, with everybody that you come across. So how honored and blessed are we to have you as our guest today. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon and as I step into my day and we'll talk to you again on the other side. Take care and have a wonderful day, everybody.